Hello everyone, it's Sizzlelapse, and I'm back yet again playing Subtech Ages. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day, I'm having a wonderful one myself. We're gonna go back to this pretty amazing pack here, kind of hammering things out. So, in between episodes, I did kind of move things around. Got my distillation tower over there. Of course, I still have my pump jack here, because that's, that's, that's the chunk that has the stuff and the things that we need. But I did add a couple more thermoelectric, so I got that going. Ran a pipe all the way over to this tank. I started feeding my tanks from the top. Uh, the main reason for that is, so when I have a lever down here, kind of set up so I can move liquids when I want to. I can flick the lever. It doesn't disable what's importing, so through the top is way better. Definitely a better way to do it. And uh, yeah, I also have this one set up with lever on it. This one actually has diesel in it. Right now it's turned off because I don't really need the fuels. The tanks are all filled up. And uh, yeah, probably good enough for right now. But I have this one set up with the diesel so I can pump it back in to the distillation tower and then process it into the other liquids which are the lubricant, which I already used some, some kerosene, and the gasoline. So if we need those fuels for anything, I can still produce them. I may end up needing these kind of tanks for them. I really don't know how much of it we need, but for right now, it's good to go, and uh, I'm happy with the setup. I just have a couple pipes down here, so it can only go to one spot. As long as I leave one bucket of each liquid in there, I don't have to do any sorting or anything like that. So that's pretty cool. Over here, I have a pipe coming off our naphtha, and it's actually going into the chemical mixer in there underground, and uh, kind of set there so we can automate that really easy. Uh, you'll notice there's a sign here too. It says Hall of the Great Jabbertick. Jabbertick is, well, he's one of my admins in my Discord channel. He's also one of the staff there, basically. And uh, he's really helpful, and I owed him a build. And uh, <laughs> he's an amazing guy. He helps me out on my Sevtech server, which is fantastic. Without that, I, I wouldn't even know how to run the server. I mean, He's one of those guys where I go, how do you do that? He goes, just do this, this, and this with the server. And I'm just like, what did you just say? <laughs> Very techy guy. He does it for a living. Well, he does uh, coding, I think, for a living. I'm not really sure. But uh, I owed him a build either way. And yeah, it's Hall of the Great Jabbertick. This is his build. It is for him. And, uh, it is pretty cool. It turned out pretty well. It's not 100% finished. It needs a little more kind of blenishment and uh, kind of just sorting out. Little bits and bobs here and there. But uh, we'll get them sorted out over time. But uh, I just want to say, Jabbertech, thank you very much. You've been very, you're amazing, man. You just, you just, you're just very helpful and you've been awesome. You don't ask for anything in return and uh, you rock. But uh, I should mention Iteration Funk and Mr. Random too. Those guys are really helpful, man. Without you guys, you just, just help me so, so much, man. You guys rock. <laughs> All around. There we go. All whole bunch of shutouts. Anyway, in here, I did automate this. This is the chemical mixer. So like I said, Daphtha. I actually have a line of steam coming in from the, um, what is that called? The solar tower. So it's coming in there. I can literally just do that. Yeah, that'll just start going and start processing the, uh, what is that? Stuff? The naphtha and the steam and then making the, what is this stuff? Molten propene. And it comes over here and gets turned into the molten plastic, which is awesome because we need molten plastic today. And actually, I'd be, take you, and do that right there because I actually want to kind of stock that up. I might move that over there. We need the multiple plastic today to kind of do some pneumatic craft, which is what we're going to get into. Uh, anything else I do in here? Oh, I added some power lanterns up there. So they're going, they're doing their thing. I had to run them off their own power line. So they're actually using windmills that I put on each side of the building. And uh, they don't like HV wires, I've noticed. They just won't connect to them. <laughs> so they are doing their thing. They're working. And that's pretty cool. Up here, I just wanted to show this really quick too. If you want to automate this arc furnace for any reason, any way... Um, to be able to pump items into them, there's actually a blue spot here and a blue spot there. So one is for this side. So this side is for that side. And this side is for the additives, just so you can kind of automate it the way you want. And, uh, that is kind of how that works. So I guess that's pretty much everything I did. I think so. <laughs> uh, other than crafting, but we're going to cover that in a second. Let's head over here. Go this way. Uh, I have a little dirt pillar here because <laughs> I actually used it. Because I actually grabbed two advancements kind of in between the episodes. And uh, we're going to kind of get over it real quick here. You notice I have some TNT. Let's head out here. This is to make, I think it's called the compressed iron. Let's go here. Uh, yeah, the pneumatic iron ingot. So this is something that we need to get a pneumatic craft. I made that, and I actually made a whole bunch of the pressure chamber walls and that stuff. Because uh, we need to get into that. So to do this, all you need to do is, well, you don't need to make the pillar. It just makes it so you don't blow up your front lawn. But, uh, you can go. You can throw down a piece of TNT. Something like that. Throw some iron on it. I did several stacks. I think like four stacks. But anyway, let's do that. Might have been more than four, actually. I can't remember. Oh, I messed up my lever. Let's do that. Guess we can flick that. And once that explodes, that's actually going to turn it to 
uh, compressed iron, which is pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it's simple, right? We just got two. I think we put three there. Uh, we get some loss, though. So if you go to the recipe on this, you'll see. You throw one or more ingots on the ground, set it off an explosion next to them, 20% loss. So you will lose some of your iron when you do it. Just uh, kind of a heads up. We will get a better way of doing this really soon. And uh, I'm not really sure how much of this we're going to need. Although I think there was a singularity, <laughs> I think. Yeah, later on, there's a singularity. So I don't know how much uh, singularity actually takes in this pack. But uh, I guess we'll have to deal with that when we get to the point where we're actually producing creative items. But anyway, let's get on to something else here. And okay, let's kind of look at what we're actually heading towards. So the, what I'm trying to get to is refined storage. It doesn't really matter which one you're heading to. It just seems like to me, I was looking at all the recipes, refined storage is the easiest. So if we go here and kind of look at what we need to get into refined storage, we need logic processors. So the first thing we need are actually the presses. To make the presses, we actually need the assembly line. To be able to make the assembly line, we need to be able to make circuits. So to make these circuits is a whole nother kind of can of worms. So we're going to need some etching acid. And we're going to need the plastic sheets, which is definitely a thing. And there was one more step here. Don't, uh, oh yeah, these circuits. <laughs> you got to make these transistors in the pressure chamber. So that is kind of like where we're all headed. So I've already done some crafting. We're going to have to do some more. I did make everything we need for the pressure chamber. This stuff is not expensive. Not at all. So not too bad. Just blow up your iron and kind of go. Same as these air compressors. I did make a ton of them. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing this different. And, uh, than I usually do, because I kind of learned of a better way to do it by watching uh, Iteration Funk. So one of my patrons, and just a good guy all around. But uh, yeah, definitely a thing. Also, I have this uh, dye powder. We're going to need this for making plastic, for making the different colors. So I have that there. I have some of these security upgrades, which are pretty cool. It's going to make it so nothing blows up. I usually did this another way, but uh, not that way anymore, because this way is much easier. And uh, also the speed upgrades. So this is just going to kind of speed things up. And uh, this took lubricant well, buckets of lubricant. So I did make some more lubricant and uh, got that going. You can't use the jerry can. You actually have to do it bucket by bucket. So it is a little grindy, but uh, definitely did it. Got it done. And now uh, we're going to get some more things done. <laughs> let's go here. Let's grab some more of this iron. One thing we're going to need right away is the mixer. Let's grab that. This is the plastic mixer. I guess we need some glass. So let's grab maybe a stack of that. Fill that in there. And this could be what we need for making plastic. Plastic is going to be much easier in this pack because we don't have to make the molten plastic. We already have it. I mean, we've already gone through that process. So that is pretty sweet in itself. I mean, because plastic, usually you need a whole refinery set up. Then you have to heat it up and do all this other jazz. We don't even do that. I, I just put in molten plastic. Uh, I do not even have to give it heat in this pack. No power, no nothing. <laughs> just feed it the molten uh, liquid. And then we're good to go. This and the dye. And uh, yeah, sweet. So plastic's already pretty much done. Just need to have a way of getting the liquid in there. Uh, the other thing we need to do was I want to look at the Abadron. Because we do need to get in that. Because we need a program. So these programs are over here. Let's go here. These things here. And the Abadron is what's going to kind of give us these programs. I think we need the drill program to do what we need to. We could just do this one, which kind of does both. But uh, this is what makes the assembly line work. So we're going to do that. I actually didn't check the controller either. I should check that because it may be different. No, it just needs a bunch of circuits. So we're going to have to do quite a few circuits. Eight at least, I think. is that That's what it puts at. Yeah, I think we're going to need eight, uh, which is definitely a thing. But uh, we'll get that done. We are going to need a UV light box as well. But I don't know if we could even craft that yet. We're going to need the PCB blueprint. Which we could get from the Abadron in the stabilized metal, metal. But I don't know if I want to do it that way. Because stabilized metal is a bit of a pain. <laughs> like, look at all that. I might just craft it that other way. So if we went that way, what would we need? Three redstone lamps that we already have. Okay. Two circuit boards, some plastic, and a blueprint. I may go grab plastic. I don't think we have enough here. I think I only have four here. And make another circuit. And get that crafted up really quick. Because otherwise you have to get that from the Amadron. And this stabilized metal is just work. <laughs> it's just straight up work. We could sell liquids though. Oh, maybe we'll do it that way. We could just sell some of that kerosene. And get stabilized metal. Yeah, I think we're going to do it that way. That's actually much better. And okay, the first thing we're going to do is kind of set up the whole plastic setup. So I think I'm going to do that here. And hope I don't get electrocuted trying to place this hopper. Uh, these uh, HV uh, wires have more than... It seems like at least a one block range. So... Yeah, definitely something you want to deal with. Do yeah, there's a liquid hopper there. Let's grab that. Let's head over here, I suppose. No, I was able to get it connected all safe. That's good. 
this should start getting molten plastic, which is exactly what we want. Grab our all our dyes here. These are super easy to make. Oh, I beat cactus, lapis, and uh, I do use beetroot for that. So that I handle that, and we can just make plastic now. So I need to kind of figure out which plastic we need first. But, uh, that is not that big a deal. I may see if I can kind of get that face down. No, nope. gonna have to break it. I don't think it loses its uh, liquid when you do that, right? There we go. Muzzle well pump all of the plastic we have in there right now. Kind of get that going. Empty out the buffers, and uh, that's left on. So it'll just continue to make it. It is making it right. Missing energy. Oh, I never set the wire. Okay, I should do that. <laughs> Where's that HB wire? Let's do that. Oh, let's grab you. Do that. Sweet. Can I change? Why won't you go in your box? There we go. Sweet. Okay. Let's just go like that and like that. There we go. I was working over there. broke that wire because, like I said, that thing, if you get too close, it actually does a lot of damage. It is quite a bit. Can I, can I demonstrate? Can I, can I? Yeah, look at that. Oh! <gasps> No! And okay, I suppose we learned not to play with high voltage wires, but uh, definitely a thing. We definitely died. I lost a bunch of levels, but nothing you could do. I almost touched that one too. Anyway, I died right on top of that connector, so I actually had to come back here, break connectors, do all that jazz, rehook up everything. And yeah, so I went to the trouble and grabbed a whole bunch more stuff we'll need, so we could do a little less laps, a little less running. So yeah, let's get to it. The first thing we're going to make here is going to be the Amadron tablet, I think. So let's do that. This is going to allow us to kind of order things, right? Let's go to, I guess, tablet right there. And uh, it's this puppy. So I guess we're going to need that. Let's grab a redstone torch and let's grab a GPS tool. Uh, we're going to need plastic. So we're going to need, let's see here, four red plastic. You can just keep hitting the button, right? There we go. And we're going to need seven gray, right? Let's do that. I think is what it was. I keep wanting to just grab it, but you can't do it that way. Let's do it like that. And that's just keep getting filled up with liquids, so that's pretty sweet. And let's grab you. And there we go. We have the GPS tool. And we're going to grab our air canister. So that's all a real cheap recipe. And that's going to give us the actual Amazon tablet. See there, the bar is empty. So we're actually going to need a charging station. Let's make that. That should be pretty simple. Just going to need some cobblestone. And grab that. We have a charming, charming, mm, a very charming station. No, we have a charming station. We're also going to need to kind of set up pressure for it because all the all the machines in pneumatic craft take what's called pressure. So that is definitely a thing. I am going to have to go grab fuel because that is the one thing I forgot. Coal and stuff. Dag damn it. Anyway, we'll get it set up anyway. Then I'll go grab coal and then I'll be right back. But uh, just making sure we have everything here. That, that, that. And probably some speed upgrades and a security. There we go. So these machines can explode. So you need to be a little careful with them. But I'm going to give you a pretty easy way to be pretty safe with them. I'm going to take this here. I'm going to just throw it kind of in the corner because this one doesn't take very much space. But uh, we'll be able to kind of hook it up. And it can hook up directly to the air compressor. So you don't even have to worry about any lines or anything. You're going to want one of these security upgrades in here. This is going to make it so once it reaches kind of the point where it can explode, it's going to start kind of pumping out pressure into the air. It will make some noise. It's a little, a little irritating. Actually, when I grab fuel, I'll grab some of our soundproofing blocks as well. Because, uh, yeah, in time, that's going to start making a lot of noise. And I'm going to give it a couple speeds just so it doesn't take forever. And then go over here, I suppose. Grab a couple speeds over here as well. Because this actually makes it uh, so it can actually grab more of the pressure quicker. Because this is at what's called 0.0, .0 bar. And uh, that's kind of like bars of pressure. And uh, each one of these is a bar, right? So 5, 10, 15, 25. So this one can actually take a ton of pressure. But at the same time, this thing can only take 5, right? This goes over five, it's gonna go in the red zone and go boom. But anyway, we want the security upgrade. Not worried about the security in this one. So I'm gonna go grab some fuel. I'll be right back and uh, we'll get that done. And okay, I wanna grab some fuel. I'm gonna take that fuel, just throw it in there. Each slot has a security upgrade and four speeds. Same as this one here. The speed in this side will actually make it so it can just absorb more pressure quickly. Uh, this side will just make it so it actually produces more pressure. So that's kind of how it works. If we have this little check mark here, it usually means it's working, it's doing its thing. Uh, it should be pretty cool. Since it has the security upgrade, if this pressure gets up too high, it's actually going to start making sound, which is going to be pretty soon, and dropping its pressure, kind of just pumping it out of the machine right into the world. And uh, at that point, it's going to get a little bit noisy, and uh, we're going to want to deal with it. So the way I'm going to deal with that is just put a soundproofing block, and that should handle that. This thing should not explode. It should be okay. So I'm actually going to walk away from it, because <laughs> I'm very trusting. No, we're actually going to set up the pressure chamber. 
and if it explodes it explodes but i don't think it will uh it should work fine just like that this thing here over here can be different sizes i'm gonna do a five by five for the pressure chamber so we're gonna kind of need this it's gonna take a few minutes i guess another bit or two probably to charge up that uh whatever we're making there the Amazon tablet so that isn't too bad let's go guess this way that should be good we're gonna do yeah like i said a five by five we got plenty of room hoping it doesn't kind of interfere with the uh wire that's here and it looks like it's pretty good so shouldn't have to worry about that so yeah just a big five by five box is pretty much all we're doing here super simple and uh super easy to do really it will form into a multi-block it won't be so hideous when it's done which is a nice added bonus so we're going to need some pressure chamber valves so we're going to actually take three of these out you notice i made some more of these because you can actually turn these into other blocks later on in the pressure chamber uh not with the pressure chamber i think the assembly line could turn these into something right um i'll look at that later i think the assembly line could turn these into the better version of the piping for this mod i think that's what they do anyway let's go ahead grab these we'll throw those right there this is actually going to be for uh pressure so that's what the pressure valves are we're just going to put three of them because that's going to make our life nice and easy and we're going to make sure our security goes into every one right away so these things don't have a chance of blowing up because uh, blowing up is bad <laughs> in the front we're going to grab um where is it here the interfaces these things are all super easy to make just this this and that you get eight it's not expensive stuff but we're gonna make one go that way and one go that way so we got one with an eye for an input no for an output then we're gonna grab some glass here and, uh, this is just another recipe not a big deal but we'll be able to see the front and once i got kind of get it all together there you can see it actually kind of does stuff and does things and it's pretty cool but uh <laughs> it's ready to go pretty much so I'm not going to get it going right away, I guess, because I don't have unlimited fuel like I would want to. Although I could probably set this to a signal, right? Right here? Any signal? Yeah, any signal. There we go. I might be able to just do this with uh, a couple levers, right? I have levers in here? Yeah, let's do this, man. Then I can put the fuel in there and kind of power it when I need to. So let's do that, because I don't want to burn fuel all the time. That just sounds like something horrible. It sounds like something you don't want to do. I am going to give it a couple of these, probably each. Probably start with three and see if that's enough. There we go. So this should start building up pressure. Once it's at the point where we're going to actually start doing things, you're going to see kind of a particle effect in there. But, uh, it may take a couple seconds because, yeah, this builds up pressure a little slowly. But, uh, not too big a deal. I could probably do that, make it a little faster. I think it has to be at two bar of pressure inside. So you can see in there it says max pressure. The current pressure is at 0.5 or sorry 0.1 we actually need that i think at two before this thing will actually start working but uh yeah we should be good I'm probably just let it go probably just leave it at three <laughs> let it go let's come over here and grab our amadron let's uh go in here grab that it's still not filled but it doesn't really matter problems oh it doesn't really matter go there i guess we'll just let that charge up maybe do the same thing with this one set it to uh, um is it any signal yes and can i just turn that off Oop, let's do that there we go is it off now no it's not i'm a little afraid of blowing it up right now let's take the fuel out <laughs> do that signal high signal should that be what it is i think that would work right there right high signal problems provide red zone signal so it's actually off right now so that's cool that's exactly what i want sweet and these ones were these ones actually still going or not they're still burning fuel so i probably need to set those to high signal as well yes so that would be on high signal on and high signal on sweet so once this gets enough pressure we need to do some crafting in there but uh, while we're waiting we'll grab this amadron do some stuff with this so and okay now that we have the amazon tablet we're actually going to take an inventory and just throw that down i'm going to use this one there that's a byproduct one i don't want to deal with that so we're going to shift and click that and that's going to tell it item providing location it's going to tell the drone kind of when we order something where do pick up and drop off items that we actually order i'm also going to tell it because i'm going to sell this kerosene so i'm going to shift right click on that and that's going to tell it where to come and look for kerosene so that is actually pretty cool too so if we right click you'll see here we actually have you know kind of stuff here stuff Different things we could trade. This one over here is for trading with players on servers. We're not going to worry about that one at all. We just care about this order button. 
and uh, getting some of the stabilized metal. So we have a good amount. How much of this do we have? 10, 20, 30, 40, 45 ish of that. So I should be able to. That'd be 10, 20, 30, 40. That'll give us what? About 16 stabilized metal? We might try that. See if that works out. So uh, that should be pretty decent right there. That'll give us what? 16? I'm thinking uh, how much we need here. Because we need to buy the drill. This is kind of the one we need for the advancement. So if we go in here and go to age. Okay, sorry, four, because I've been so used to go to H3. We need the, uh, oh, laser. We need laser, not drill. Make sure you get laser. And then we also need the, uh, what was the other one? The yeah, actually blueprint. So anyway, we're going to do that. Let's go in here. Let's actually order this thing. Let's do that and kind of see what happens here. You're going to see here, there's a little tiny drone down there. We should have another one kind of come down. Yeah, he just teleported right here. He's a delivery drone, so he's going to come. He's going to grab a whole bunch of this liquid. Didn't grab as much as I thought he would. Hopefully, we still get as many of the uh, actual stabilized as I thought, because I'd like to get this done in kind of two cycles and kind of move on. Uh, usually, there's a lot more trades. We're limited in this one. Like Usually, it has a whole bunch of different kind of vanilla trades and stuff like that. Looks like they've been all turned off, but we did get 16, so that's cool. Now that we have stabilized metal in there, we have mobs that way. Uh, <laughs> now we have stabilized metal that way. We need to get the, what was it, laser? Is what I said? Yes, we're going to need one of those. And we actually need one of these PCB blueprints. So we're going to do that and we're going to order it. And uh, they're going to come along and do that stuff too. So the first drone is going to come down. He's going to pick up the stabilized, which is pretty cool. It's so nice having a radar band so no when mobs are nearby. But uh, yeah, the first one will come and just pick up these. Kind of grab them, hopefully, if he ever gets here. Uh, there he is there. And then he'll take off. Then once he's gone, he kind of despawns then another one spawns in and comes in and drops your items and uh once he does that we've got to move forward we need that blueprint to make the what is it uv light box we need this for very short term we need this to kind of make what is it go to use on this go to here we need to be able to take these here which are where are they right here empty pcbs and kind of turn them into these ones here which ones no how's that work let's go to here let's go to use it is an empty PCB, but they have like percentage on them. We'll kind of look at it once it's done there. JEI doesn't seem like it. But anyway, we got our laser and we got our empty PC, uh, sorry, PCB blueprint. And that's pretty cool. I'm going to go sleep here, I think, before we get a mob kind of walk up on us. And okay, now that we have the empty PCB, we can make the UV light box. Let's go ahead and make that real quick. Because, uh, yeah, just take some redstone lamps. You can, I got those, a ton of those at uh, the your gas tower, actually. So we have that. We can actually set this thing up really quick. Although we can't really use it very well yet. So let's grab that. Let's grab an air compressor. We have a security upgrade. And, uh, that should be pretty easy to set up. So let's go ahead. Just set it up over here somewhere. Maybe there. And put you there. And there you go. This is uh, four PCBs. It takes empty PCBs. So these ones right here. You notice they have a durability bar. So it's going to kind of make one of these for us. So if we go to use on this. Go to use on that. You'll see it's going to make us, well, a circuit. So to make those circuits though... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of work. So let's go back to, I guess, circuit. Let's kind of go to the start. There we go. So we need to make these circuits. So it takes all this stuff. Fine. First, you need these unassembled PCPs. Uh, PCBs, not PCPs. Very different things. Ignore this right here, because this is what we actually need our first four circuits so for, because this is actually going to give us the assembly line so we can skip a step. What we need to actually do <laughs> is... Throw one of these ones here, sorry, one of these ones here with the durability on it, which is an empty PCB into a pool of etching acid, which is then going to give us the actual, this one here, which is the, yeah, I think it's on printed is what it's called, the unassembled PCB. So there's a lot of steps there. There's actually one more step. If we can actually get to it right here, we actually need to run it through the pressure chamber. So green plastic and a compressed iron ingot to actually get that one. So there's quite a few steps here. So we need to make etching acid. We need to make some of these empty PCBs. And then we need to kind of like run them through uh, the UV light box. And well, it's UV light box, then etching acid. This is the way it works. But anyway, let's go make our etching acid. It'll, it'll make more sense when I get it going. Uh, these here too, the inputs and outputs, they can't insert and export um, automatically. You actually need something to pop into them. So I'm actually going to use a hopper. And I actually made some cables here from Cyclic. I've never used them. We're going to see if we can figure them out. But um, the recipe should be this right here. So that, that, that. I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, two green plastic. Let's go ahead and grab two green plastic. So it would be that and that. 
There we go. That is the recipe for the etching acid. Uh, that recipe is a little hard to find, so I'll actually show you. You go to pressure and go here and go to use on that. There we go. That's how you find these recipes. And it is right there. There we go. The etching acid. So this is kind of in-world kind of crafting with that. Uh, I need to go here first, actually. I want to change the filter for the export because this will just, if I put in get in here, like an iron ingot, it'll immediately pull it out without doing anything to it. So we need to set it to item begins with item name contains. I want to set this to etch because that's what we're actually going for, right? And then we can start just pumping these items in here, I think. There we go. And it takes a little time. This thing's a little slow. Well, I can't actually see with the hopper. Hopper wasn't the best choice. But uh, it, you kind of see it when it comes out, I suppose. Oh, there it is there, etching acid. But you can see I can't actually grab it. I can't. I can't pull it. It won't let me. So I'm hoping <laughs> this is going to let me here. These recipe was pretty cheap, too. So for eight of these was uh, brick stairs. So you have to kind of go through the whole brick thing and then do that. So a little bit of work, but I went and did that. I think we might be able to do that. And there we go. Got our etching acid. That is cool. I'm going to be using this piping, but I don't know how to kind of set the sides on this thing yet. So I'm going to have to figure out if wrenches, maybe Cyclic has his own wrench. But I just noticed we had access to them. I thought I'd try them. But that'll make it so we can pull items out. So anytime you want to pull something out, though, you really want to go in here and kind of do the filter. Otherwise, because we don't have any, like, I don't know, um, any kind of piping where we can just set filters on yet. So I figured that was the easiest way to do it. Anyway, that handles that. We have that component. So the etching acid, we'll just kind of do it like right over here for right now. Because we're only going to have to use this one very limited. So let's do that. Next, we're going to want to make some of the uh, PCBs. Let's grab uh, some of this, right? So let's grab... How many do I want to do? I'm only going to do like four. Because I think we only need four to the assembly line. And once we get the assembly line, we can make this stuff a lot easier anyway. So let's go make some green plastic. Let's make four. There we go. And what is this actually called? It was just called PCB, right? We want, we'll just say PCB because they all have PCB on it. So I'll do that. I'll set the filter. Let's go here. Let's go to PCB. That way we only have to worry about it pulling that and throw that in there and that in there. So that's going to get pulled in there. The bar is coming down because I actually have those all turned off right now because I was wasting a bunch of fuel. But there we go. There's our empty PCBs. That was awesome. They're going to start coming out. It has this little doorway animation thing. There you go. That is cool. Next thing we need to do is run these through here. And this is actually going to take some time. So do I have fuel in there yet? I do not. I should have already had this. Anyway, we'll do that. Grab some of these speeds. I already pulled the speeds out of the other one and stuff. Because the, the Amadron tablet, we're not going to have to use that much more. Definitely want a security in there. And then I'll probably want some speeds in this one. And that should handle that. I'm hoping since this one has security, I shouldn't have to worry about this one. But I'm going to kind of watch it here. But you can see that the percentage is going up. And that is kind of important. <laughs> this one's off, right? I'm going to steal the security from this one. Just to make sure I can kind of keep this one safe. There we go. And maybe upgrade these. Let's put five and five. And there we go. I actually I have to do four of these. So this is actually going to take a few minutes. But uh, the other thing I'm actually going to do too at the same time is probably start working on a whole bunch of those transistors. So these ones here. We're going to need a bunch of these. So if we actually go to the circuit, let's go to the circuit right there. We need three transistors and three capacitors for every one of these printed circuit boards. So <laughs> we're going to need a lot of them. So just to set up the assembly itself, we're going to need 12 transistors, 12 capacitors, and that is definitely a thing. So what I think I'm going to do is kind of let these process. Once they're processed, actually, I want to do one of these with you guys. So, <laughs> just so you know exactly how it works here. So, maybe I'll just start some transistors. We need some uh, black here. Let's grab, I guess, 12 of that. 12. And what color were the other ones, actually? These ones were cyan. Let's grab some cyan as well, I suppose. Do that. It's filling up slowly. Probably going to drain it here in a second. Need another 11. Oh, well, we'll get the rest later. There we go. And let's go here for a second. Where was the transistor, man? It's right there. So we need redstone and compressed iron. Let's grab. Oh, that's the perfect number right there. But, uh, we need 24 of this as well. And this is just to get the assembly line going. It's pretty crazy. Anyway, because I've seen those uh, circuits in other recipes as well. But anyway, so this one is going to be 
This one here, what was it? Was it a transistor? That one is the transistor. So I should probably name this, we'll call it trans. There we go. And throw those in there. So that should actually make those and that's actually pretty cool. And over here, is this one done? It is done. It's at 100%. So I'm going to take that, throw that in there. And this one I'm going to throw in the water. So in time, it's not going to take too long. It's going to get processed and actually turned into, uh, what was the other one it gets turned to? <laughs> I can't even remember what the name of it is. There we go. So many of them. It's like unassembled, isn't it? Unassembled? Yeah, unassembled PCB. So once that's done, so you just kind of let it do world crafting for a little bit. Once it's done, it's done. And like I said, I only need to do four of those. Are these coming out already? They're already done, man. Look at this. Just flying. It's actually not taking as long as I thought it would. Let's grab five of those puppies. There we go. We can get these ones done. These ones were the capacitors, right? Go here, here. Yes, capacitors. So we'll rename that. So it's a little hands-on, right? This is a hands-on mod when you don't have really anything to really automate it, right? We may have stuff that could automate this better. But I, the way this pack kind of progresses... It's weird because you have to sit there for two hours and just look through GAI to figure out what you have. So, yeah, every time you got to go through a new age. Anyway, that one's done. This one's almost done. That one is not converted yet. We'll just let that go. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure four of these actually switch over because it's actually going to take a little longer than I thought. And uh, once they're done, I don't know how long. Does it say how long it takes? Go here, go to use, go to here, go to use. And it says five minutes. So... Once I have four of these kind of ready to be picked up, I'll pop back and just make sure we have everything, and then we can find a, kind of finish this off and actually get our assembly line going. And okay, here's all of our auto-assembled PCBs. So we have these now. I also had to do some more crafting, so I made some more empties. So I have those, and I also have, well, I had to make 66 blue plastic, made some more transmitters and, uh, well, transistors and capacitors as well, because I realized I totally math things wrong. I think we actually need... Um, seven of these circuits to kind of get going so if we got to go to i guess use on this not the recipe we should be able to craft up eight of these right away so kind of get that going uh, that should give us advancement which is pretty cool you kind of see here it's going to kind of lead us on the things we're not interested in, in right now so yeah that is stuff for tomorrow actually so we can actually get refined storage but uh for today we actually want the assembly so let's take a look at that and uh, kind of get it done man we have to make a whole bunch of these cylinders. How many was it? We need two of these I.O. units. So these are the in-outs. We actually need to make the wrench first. Let's actually make the wrench for the mod. Because we need to be able to switch over one of those I.O.s. So let's do that. Hopefully I have everything. I didn't even look at the wrench recipe. I need a orange dye powder. We'll do that one last, I guess. And then I'll kind of go grab that. Because I just have to go break down a flower. Let's go to assembly. There we go. And see what we need here. We need one of these. So let's grab that. Need some of these cannon barrels. Probably a fair amount. I think I saw that quite a bit. <laughs> Actually, every one of these uh these uh pneumatic cylinders take one. So yeah, we'll be making some more of those, but that's cool. We have that one. So this is the main table where everything kind of gets crafted. Uh we'll need another one of these. Actually, we're gonna need a bunch more. <laughs> How many of these do we need, man? That let's count these out. So I need two IOs, so that's six. Plus, which one am I making here? I'm making the laser, right? Plus, the, we need nine more. Okay, so I have two. We need seven of these things. Let's get that done. Let's go to recipe. There we go. Five, six. There we go. That should equal seven right there. And then we need to make all of them into this stuff. So let's do that. I'm short. What am I short on? I'm actually short on compressed iron. Okay, grab some iron, actually. Do this. Throw that in there. Going to get that switched over to... Let's do compressed. I think it is. Right? And that should make that stuff, right? I think that's what it's going to do. <laughs> Hopefully. I think that's how you make it. Let's go to uh, compressed iron ticket. Compressed iron ticket right there. We can do it through there. Do there. So that should start pumping out there. Let's see here. Is it going to go? I think the more you put in there, the longer it takes. <laughs> Hey, wait, we'll kind of see here. There we go. It's starting to come there. That's not too bad. Didn't take as long as I thought. We just made a full stack. We should be okay now, actually, uh, if this comes out. There we go. Sweet. I thought I was going to have to do a whole bunch of craft and kind of go right away and come back and all that jazz. Hey, wait, let's tab you. That should give us our nine. Let's go back to assembly. There we go. And see what we can make. 
These are the IOs. We need two of those. We already have the assembly platform. We're going to need the, I guess, the laser and the controller. Can we do the, the controller? Sweet. And I guess the last one is the actually the laser. Where did I need orange dye? Oh, yeah, on the wrench, right? Right here. And we're going to have to charge that up. So what I'm going to do is go kind of process that orange dye, come back, and we'll set this up. We do have to get this kind of with a little bit of bar in it. So I'll probably charge that up in the charging station as well. And then we'll set up the assembly and get this done. The wrench should be charged up enough, so that should be good there. We're going to set this up really quickly. It should not take much. Let's just find a space because I can move this thing anywhere. It doesn't really take much space or any setup, really. Anyway, let's go to IO here, IO there. We're going to set the platform in center. It doesn't really matter where it goes. And then probably the laser. We'll probably throw that right there. It doesn't really matter where the controller goes, but I guess we'll just throw it right here for right now. And, uh, we are going to need one of, where's it at? One of these, the air compressor. And that should be good there. Okay, let's go. I may have to go steal a security upgrade. <laughs> but anyway, we'll put it right there. Grab that, some coal. I guess we'll grab that. Let's actually turn that off, right? That's off. I can grab the security. I'll grab it out of this. There we go. Steal the speeds too, because we could use them. <laughs> Those things are a little expensive. I didn't want to make it a sane amount. But anyway, do that. I guess we'll do like four in there. And then give it some fuel. That's pretty sweet. We'll let that kind of ramp up. And I guess we're going to need to put a security in this one. And as many speeds as we pretty much get into this one, to be honest. And uh, this should be almost ready to go. So I'm just going to show you how it works. That's why I made these extra empty PCBs. Because we're going to need the circuits anyway. But this makes it so we don't have to use that whole etching acid setup anymore. Which is kind of why I wanted to rush this. Because, well, we do need the cir these circuits for quite a lot of stuff. And uh, is definitely a thing. So I want this chest. You could have more than one chest. It's actually pretty smart. But uh, I just need them beside these in outs. And I need to turn one of them blue. Because I think that one is the, actually the out. And I think it just needs a program here. Sweet. And it's smart. So if you look at the recipe for the assembly. So we go to assembly. Go here. And go to use on this thing. You can kind of see everything it can do. So it could take say a block of compressed iron. Make you, sell, make you some you know chamber walls. It can turn... Uh, redstone into uh, rose red, which is actually a pretty good recipe for dye. Then those are the ones we actually want for the other, uh, the, all the presses and jazz. But it can also take stuff like this empty, empty PCBs, take the pressure walls and make the advanced pressure tubes, like I said earlier. And uh, it is smart though. So the second I throw this in here, it should know what to do. Yeah, there we go. It's grabbing the stuff. It's doing the things. And then I guess this one is the in. The blue is the in, I suppose. To that and boom, done. And it's going to make them now. <laughs> I love this thing. It looks so cool. Just look at it, man. Bam, bam, and in the chest. And you could put another chest over here. Then this arm would kind of put it in a different chest. But the same chest is fine. It's not going to pick up anything that isn't a recipe and kind of do it twice. So unless it can use it, it's not going to try to use it again. But anyway, it's pretty cool, man. And uh, that is the whole setup. We have done it all kind of in one episode, which is pretty fantastic. We got through the pressure chamber. We got through plastic, got through all the circuits, and uh, we are good to go. The last thing we need, really, is pearls from the end. That is, I think, the last thing we need. <laughs> anyway, if we go to, uh, let's check real quick. I want to make sure tomorrow we can actually get the refined storage. Because, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. We have to get the inscribers that I already knew. But uh, we could automate those actually really easy. Uh, we'll have to set up power for that somehow. I'm not sure exactly how that's working. I think it's with the power adapter. But not 100% sure. We need that. Okay. We need an uh, advanced crafting table. That's just a little bit of crafting. And yeah, everything else, man, looks doable. It looks like we'll be able to get it all done tomorrow. And that's awesome because we'll finally have an inventory system. And uh, that is fantastic, to be quite frankly. Yeah, just go let everyone know that I do have a Discord. If you want to stop by, say hello, any of that jazz, feel free. Everyone is welcome. Uh, just keep classy. That's all I ask. I also have a Patreon server. If you want to think about maybe supporting me, moving forward, making videos, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Um, one of the current rewards is actually access to a SimTech server, which has a really good community on it, and it's a beefy server. You might want to check that out. But uh, I am going to end this one here. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. I want you guys to have a good one. I'll see you guys next video. Later.